Hi, and thanks for coming back to my channel. This is Rick Perry for rickcperry.com, the pro audio development web blog. Um, this is video four of the RF Explorer, and in video one, we just talked about the RF Explorer. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Video two, we built the stand that you see the RF Explorer's sitting in. Let's see if I can turn that a little bit. There we go. Video 3, we added the Wi-Fi analyzer card, and now video 4, we're just looking at the display. Now, I've got to play around with this to get familiar with what I'm seeing, and uh, I don't really know a lot about what I'm seeing. Some of the wireless guys here can tell. But what I got is I got another router set up right here. This is the router that I use when I mix out live to connect the iPad to. So I just wanted to show you, I've got this set up just like this, and we're going to do two modes, and we'll turn the router on, and you'll see. I'll go ahead and turn it on, because it'll take a minute for the wireless signal to kick in. And uh, I think this, what you're seeing right here, this is the other wireless router that I have in the house that everything's connected to. And it seems that um, whenever I launch a web page, before this thing fires up, let's go ahead and I'll launch Safari, but then I'll minimize it. And you see there's a lot of activity happens here. I'm not sure if this is the other router in the back. And this might be a neighbor's router. But at any rate, you saw that activity really jump up when I launched a web page. Now, if you, I don't know if you can see the lights on the router. But when you see those light up and you'll see, I think, the blue Wi-Fi light come on. You'll see another change here. And uh, we'll also switch this to another mode as well. We'll switch it to the channel mode, which... Um, Again, I don't really know a whole lot about yet, so it's going to take a little bit of experimentation to figure out what everything means. And uh, who knows, there might be a fifth video of completely explaining what's going on here. But um, at least, you know, something's working. I can see something. Um, you know, it might be one of those deals where on this router here, um, I actually hide the SSID broadcast. And... Uh, but it still shows up, you can still see it. So even if the broadcast is not being shown, this will at least let you see uh, wireless. Okay, so our light's on now. And uh, I really didn't see a whole lot of change, a whole lot of difference. Maybe if I connect to the hidden SSID broadcast, let's see if that makes any difference here. All right, so I'm going to change my other network. <clears throat> okay, and we'll do that security. And okay, here's where I'm gonna hit the join button. Got a lot of activity right there. Okay, I just hit the join button. And I had already started typing in the the name whenever I saw that peak right here start popping up okay so I think I used the wrong password <clears throat> but I'm fairly sure if we turn this off that's probably going to drop All right, and that's off yep so that showed you 2.431 megahertz that was this router <clears throat> So I'm going to dismiss that and cancel joining that network. So we know this frequency here was at, so it's 2.34. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here. Now, this will give me a chance to show you the spectrograph. This shows you that was the, the, the network activity. And uh, the, the darker the color, the, the higher gain. So... Uh, and that was right about the 2.3. That was that would be correct. Now this is just sweeping back and forth, and I've noticed this happens. 
And I guess that's just sweeping back and forth looking for something to connect to. And once you stay, once you get connected, bam, then it's, it's pretty hot there. Let's see which I am on the... Uh, That's a different frequency I'm on now. So now let's switch to a different mode here. <clears throat> and on the RF Explorer, if I hit menu, whoop, let's see. Oh, this happened. This has happened before. Uh, I go monkeying around with it. Okay, we'll stop that. So that's good. Let's make sure that it's not nope, it's not running. <clears throat> okay, so now we have our we'll go back here to the menu and uh where did I get that? Uh Okay. Go down to Wi Fi analyzer. Okay, now here are our channels up. Now let me launch this again so that you can see it <clears throat> we go to screen start the live display now this is what you're actually seeing on here and I think you can see here see the the peaks on channel five six and seven so this would probably be useful you know you can assign your own channel in the router setup <clears throat> So if you're in there and you see there's a lot of um, routers that's already on these specific channels, it appears like you could probably get on channel 12 or 13 where something's not as active and have a more secure connection. So now what I'm going to do is turn the router off and we'll see what drops. We see 7 is pretty much jumping, 6 and 7 is jumping up pretty high. So I would assume that this router, we're, we're actually seeing this. So, uh, well, let's see, this one was 2.3. Let's see if I can adjust this. Okay, so we want our center frequency to be and we lost our connection again. 2.3 Enter that. Okay, let me stop this. I've been off and on and back and forth so many times that once you get it running, I mean it's fine, you don't really have these problems. <clears throat> I've just been changing so much and trying to experiment with what does what that I can understand why it's freaking out. So now I change the frequency a little bit on this. Let me go back to Wi-Fi Analyzer. Okay, and then we'll launch this. So that should be this is a 2.4. Let's see if I can hold this. Okay, that should be hold. All right, let me unfreeze it. There we go again. I'm gonna try to move this frequency down. this anymore I think it's uh would need starting again and let's totally quit it okay start live display all right so now we're seeing I'm not going to adjust the the frequencies we're just we're going to leave it just like that and you can see the channel five six and seven peaking and those are the peak holes so what happens if we turn the router off? Let's uh, three, two, one, off.
So that you saw the, the major change there. So it appears like the router that's in the house here was you know working on channel eight, nine, and ten, and this router was actually kind of dominating on the other channels five, six, and seven. So I mean that's a pretty cool little feature for you know uh, basically I've got maybe two hundred bucks in the RF Explorer and. Uh, because the upgrade module was like forty-five dollars, and then the stand was five or six dollars, and I think they they shipped it free. So I've got roughly two, maybe two hundred twenty, two hundred thirty dollars in this, and uh, I'm thoroughly happy with being able to see what I see. Uh, one last time before we close, we'll turn the router on <clears throat> and give it a few minutes, and we'll just see what happens here. We should see that channel five, six, and seven pop back up once the router uh, goes through its post cycle and and connects and I'm pretty happy about this too I, I like the to be able to fire this this thing up and actually see the the channels and the wireless frequencies for something that's less than five hundred dollars you know and if if they had a Mac version of the uh, I think it was touchstone I think that was the name of the program. They had a Mac version of that. I mean, I, the Windows version was uh, $49. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. And I may still buy it anyway and use it on the, the virtual machine. Here, waiting for the light. So I haven't got the blue light yet. And any second now, we should get that blue light. And you'll see the, the uh, game pop up on the channels and still waiting up oh, I see channel 1 and 2 jumped up just then but still no Wi-Fi signal on this router it should be any second now we'll be getting that there we go now we should see it any second there we go there's the 5 6 and 7 it jumped up So this will give you a pretty good indication um, what's going on in your network. Okay, well, I, that's pretty much the end of the video series. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave them below. I highly recommend you go into these guys, uh, rfexplorer.com, buy their products. Uh, you know, everything seems to work great. Um, like I said, I've used it in live applications, and it saved me several times, and I highly recommend their products to anyone. Easy to assemble. Uh, firmwares are easy. They're free firmware updates for life. Uh, you download a certain program. You connect it to your machine. Uh, you hold buttons down a certain way when you turn it on, and it does the firmware update flawlessly. So uh, anyway, so if you would, uh, go down to the bottom there, click the like button, and subscribe to my channel. Share the video. Uh, share these video series on a lot of the pro audio or or radio websites um because i couldn't recommend the product anymore so thanks for watching and uh see you next time